Welcome to Mrs. Walker's sixth grade virtual science class. And today's standard that we are going to cover is the sixth grade life science standard that states, develop and use models to show relationships among the increasing complexity of multicellular organisms to include cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and organisms, and how they serve the needs of the organism. So when we're talking about living organisms, we're talking about plants and animals, and they start with the most basic building blocks of matter with atoms. So we have our atoms, and those atoms combine to form cells. So we go from a non-living thing like an atom to the chemical combination of those atoms, which creates the living cells. Cells that work together form tissues, tissues form organs, organs form organ systems, and all of that working together creates the function of the organism. So over here it states levels of organization. Life processes of the human body are maintained at several levels of structural organization. These include the chemical, cellular tissue, organ, organ system, and the organism level. Higher levels of organization are built from lower levels. Therefore, molecules combine to form cells. Cells combine to form tissues. Tissues combine to form organs. Organs combine to form organ systems. And organ systems combine to form the organism. So we're going to talk about cells to systems first. So a cell is the basic unit of structure and function for all living things. Cells work together to perform basic life processes that keep an organism alive. This process includes releasing energy from food, getting rid of body waste, and making new cells for growth and repair. In addition to performing particular functions for the organism, each individual cell can perform all of the basic life processes for itself. So cells working together for, performs, to perform specific functions form a tissue. There are four kinds of tissues in humans. The first one is the muscular tissue. This allows the skeletal system to move, and there are two types, voluntary and involuntary. Then we have the nervous tissue. Um, that is your brain and your spinal cord, and it controls all the functions of your body. Then we have the third type, the connective tissue, and that is our bones, our cartilage, tendons, and our blood. And finally, the epithelial tissue, and this is body coverings. Um, your skin falls into that category, as well as all the lining of your various organ organs. All right, organs and organ systems. Cells working together create tissues, and tissues working together create organs, and organs working together create um, organ systems. Each organ in an animal's body is made up of several kinds of tissues. Skin, for example, is an organ. It is made of many layers of epithelial tissue, as well as muscular tissue, nervous tissue, and a cushioning layer of connective tissue. Each organ in an animal's body performs a major function that keeps the animal alive. Organs that work together to perform a function form a system. A human has 10 major organ systems. So in summary, and I really like this graphic, I feel like it wraps the whole thing up, but all living things are made up of one or more cells. Each cell is able to perform the functions that support life. Cells with similar functions form tissues. Tissues that function together make up an organ, and organs working together form body systems. And if you look at this picture here, it starts with the most basic building block with our atoms at the chemical level, which then um, creates cells, those cells working with other cells create our tissues, and then the tissues working with other tissues create the function of the entire organ. So in this picture, we have the stomach, but the stomach is only a part of an entire digestive system here, and those systems work together for the organism, and then you can see the organism level here with the picture of the child. All right, see you next time.